Chances are, in some way, you're likely sabotaging your workout before it even starts, and you don't even know it. So today, I wanna to run down my list of the top eight things that you could be doing that are making your workout suck. Let's go. Okay, getting right into it here. Number one, you're listening to the wrong stuff. You need to be listening to something that is energizing you, but without distracting you. And so in that category, I would exclude any kind of podcast or anything like that. I think those are great to listen to during cardio, but during your training session, you need something that's gonna provide energy and will not be acting as a distraction. To that end, I also am a fan of avoiding music that I would consider like my favorite stuff because I know it really well. I wanna like sing along with it or just like, you know, dance poorly in my own head to it. I don't need that. I need something that's gonna be, you know, comfortable, familiar, but not like my jam, if you know what I mean. Number two would be carrying outside stressors into the gym with you. A lot of people consider their workout to be a stress relief and it may be in some way, if you're gonna be training for muscle growth or to retain tissue while you're on a deficit, you need to be focused, you need to have a good plan, you need to have a clear head and not be taking stress into the gym with you because stress is always going to be distracting in some way. And you wanna be able to remain as focused as you possibly can on the work that you have to do on a given day. Number three, because everybody wants to take fashion advice from me, right? But uh, you're not dressed for success. Now, it doesn't have to be the most stylish thing in the world, but you should be dressed in gym attire that is comfortable and that makes you feel good. As the saying goes, dress for the job that you want, not the job that you have. Dress for the physique that you want, not the physique that you have right now, which really is just about putting yourself in a position where you're wearing something that's comfortable, that has you feeling empowered, is not distracting in any way, like not too tight, not too loose. You know, you wanna be in the zone there. Women, also, you don't need me to tell you to keep your hair tied back just because it's gonna get in your way and annoy the hell out of you if you don't. Number four could be that you're going to the wrong gym. As you can tell, like a lot of the things that are really on my mind here are about getting the right vibe, being in the right headspace, and being just in the wrong gym, something that doesn't really have the right energy to match with you and what you're looking for, can be a huge negative draw on your overall energy and your overall output in the gym. So consider finding a gym that kind of matches your vibe, but definitely just consider the vibe of the gym that you're going into and how that can play into how you perform there. And this is assuming that you have multiple options. If you're like, hey, I go to work out at this time and Planet Fitness is the only thing that's open. Okay, great. So this is kind of like, you know, a luxury to be able to consider different options, etc. But still, it's something to consider. Number five on the list of things that could be making your workout suck. If you are showing up without a workout, without a plan, you got to have a plan in place if you want to be able to succeed. This goes back to the fundamental principle of training for muscle growth, hypertrophy training, which is progressive overload. And if you're not following a predictable, consistent plan and following that plan to its logical conclusion using the principle of progressive overload, you're just shooting in the dark, you're guessing at your work, and guessing isn't a good way to build muscle. You always wanna show up with a plan. That plan should be intelligently crafted based on your goals. You wanna stick with that plan and you wanna force progressive overload over time. If you want more information on that, you can check out my Hypertrophy University course. Link is in the description below. With number six, I'm not gonna win any bonus points for originality here, but uh, you're making your workout suck if you are turning workout time into your social hour. Show up to work, you're not showing up to talk. Like having a little conversation between sets is fine. Consider how long the rest breaks during your sets need to be. 60 seconds, 90 seconds, two minutes maybe, tops. Beyond that, you're wasting your time. If you're having a rest break that's taking longer than that, you are focusing more on being social than on working. Every now and then, we all have days like that. I'm not gonna be the drill sergeant that says, no, you cannot talk, but I will say, the days when you focus on talking and 
being more social and having conversations with people need to be the exception. They need to be few and far between. You want to focus on the work that you're getting done. And even during a rest period, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, however long it is, you don't want to be talking that whole time. You want to be strategizing on what your next set is supposed to be, considering your path through the workout within, in terms of progressive overload. Lots more that you could be doing to be productive during your workouts rather than just jabber John with somebody. Number seven, you could be making your workout suck if you are not fueling up properly beforehand. A good pre-workout meal is paramount if you want to really be performing at your best. This also means you're not training fasted. Fasted cardio is fine. Not required, but fine. Fasted training is a non-starter. So the way that I would construct a pre-workout meal is a reasonable size serving of protein, Figure out how many meals you're gonna have throughout a day, if that's four or five, what your daily protein intake is. Divide that number by four or five, that's how many grams of protein should be in there. 25 for women on average, 40-ish to 50 uh, for average on men, that's fine. And then a, a carb portion. So pre and post workout are when you want your carbs more than anywhere else, if you are limited and can only get them in for a couple of meals, pre and post workout is the way to go. Otherwise, if you have more, you can spread them out throughout the day, but you want a generous portion pre-workout and a generous portion post-workout as well. I'd say 25 grams minimum, 40 is better. Upwards of 80 to 100 is great if you can make it work. The other consideration here is GI comfort. So if you have a huge meal, a huge solid food meal, and then go in and work out immediately, you might just feel like throwing up and not training at your absolute best, in which case, give yourself more time or consider changing the composition of that meal so it's not quite such uh, high volume, high fiber carbs, but it's a little lower volume. It can be a liquid meal like a shake with some carbolin if you need something that's absorbed quickly into the bloodstream. Um, a protein shake with carbolin um, has super fast gastric emptying and will be a meal that you can get into your system and use um, for improved performance much faster. And then finally, the last thing that you might be doing that could be making your workout suck, well, probably not the last, but the last one on this list, is you might not be drinking enough water. You know, you need to hydrate yourself properly if you're gonna perform well. Um, you could be throwing some electrolytes into that water as well. That's never a bad idea. Really, by electrolytes, I mean sodium. Um, increasing your sodium intake during a workout is a good idea. Water just helps with the pump. Uh, you know, you can't get a pump if you don't have carbs and fluids. And so just making sure you're taking in enough fluids in addition to your pre-workout carbs is a magic formula that doesn't guarantee you're gonna get a pump, but it makes it pretty likely that you're going to. Does a pump mean that you have had an amazing workout? No, but it's one component of many that are things that we wanna watch out for. So there you go. Those are my top eight things that I would say I wanna make sure that you're doing in order to make sure that your workout is not sucking. What did I miss? Is there anything else you wanna throw on that list? Leave a comment down below. I'm gonna go in and go grocery shopping. Again, you can check the link in the description below for more information on Hypertrophy University if you're curious. Thank you for watching, appreciate it. Catch you next time.